well, first of all, I didn't, uh, I didn't really have uh, an identity as an artist, uh, even to myself. So that was the first major problem with the whole thing. Uh, and mm -hmm. secondly, uh, I didn't realize how important it was to pick a genre uh, of music or a style of music and uh, really to uh, try to target a fan base and try to continually uh, target that fan base on so Idol. I was all over the place, and really none of it was any good. And uh, I, I, I took a lot of the lessons I learned from that and tried to apply them into my life uh, going forward. Uh, so that's those are two of them. I mean, the list uh, for me, we could talk about that all night long, and uh, <laughs> it'd be a very lengthy interview. Uh, maybe one of these days we can get into that, but there's just so many things I did wrong uh, on that show. Uh, as a person, I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, a very good person to begin with, so I was selfish about a lot of things. Uh, you know, I've said before, if, if I could meet myself again, uh, I'd probably punch myself in the mouth. <laughs> Not a very good dude, you know. But uh, thankfully, I've had a, a reprisal, and I get a second shot, and uh, hopefully I can do things right this time. I didn't feel like I had a very strong performance on Blue Ain't Your Color, to be honest with you. Uh, whenever I went out to perform that song, my guitar was out of key in the beginning, so I wasn't sure what key I needed to start in. And if you listen back to... Uh, the actual performance, you can hear that something is wrong in the beginning. Uh, luckily for me, Paul, the band leader, bailed me out of there and gave me the right note on his piano uh, when he wasn't even supposed to be playing, but he does such professionals, and I'm sure it's happened before, that he immediately recognized what was going on and bailed me out, but it certainly was embarrassing for me and uh, a moment that I would never uh, like to have to go through again. Uh, and what I did also learn, well, the most important part of that lesson for me was when uh, a show has a guitar tech and they bring you your guitar and you're going to go on stage, it's in tune. You don't have to check it to make sure it's in tune. And that was my mistake. I wanted to make sure it was in tune, so I tried to double check it. And Jason Warrior was absolutely killing everybody in there on stage. So my tuner wouldn't pick up anything and I had already detuned and so I was just completely a mess. So that was uh, the week I thought that was it for me, really. Well, when they told me, I couldn't, I really was blown away that they agreed to do it. And even the fact that I was going to have the opportunity uh, really was amazing. Uh, my brother took me to see them before he died a month before. And I rode his shoulders for the whole concert. So I've always had a really strong emotional bond with Kiss, their music. And uh, uh, so I couldn't believe it. And then when we when we ran through rehearsals, I, I was messing everything up. I just, I didn't know, I was dropping lyrics. And I know all their songs and every lyric to it. I mean, I could I could be the lead singer if I had to. <laughs> but in the minute when we were, we were standing there, I just was, I was so amazed that it was actually happening. I didn't really know where I was. The rehearsal was like one of the most intense things that ever happened to me. It was like the first time I had ever been alone with a girl in a bedroom as a teenager. I really just had no idea what to do, and I was just so overthrown with emotions, and it just was such a it was such a wreck. Luckily, Paul and Gene uh, were such sweet guys that they really talked to me and tried to calm me down and tell me, "Hey, man, you know, we're just we're just dudes like you, man, and it's an honor to be up here with you. Just relax, and, you know, take it easy." And so uh, I was able to take their advice whenever the real performance went down. And, and still, I even got choked up a little bit. Didn't know if I was going to be able to actually sing because I was actually crying. But I don't think anybody could see that. But as soon as I was, I was standing underneath the drum riser before the, when the intro started, when they kicked into Detroit Rock City, I felt the risers moving. And it, the moment was so huge for me that I just for a second thought, I can't even, I can't possibly go out there. But. I, I knew I absolutely had to, so I, I did it somehow. But that, uh, besides marrying my wife and having three children, that's probably the the fifth most important thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Even more important than winning The Voice, I think, was just having an opportunity to play with kids on stage. As ridiculous as that sounds, that's how much it meant to me. And I know 
that's an experience that no matter what happens, if I go on to actually be famous or I don't do anything else for the rest of my life, that's a moment in my life that I will never be able to have again. Uh, and I know that. And it's, it was such a thrill. And I'm just so thankful to NBC, The Voice, that they allowed me that opportunity. And uh, I'm so thankful that Kiss uh, would agree to do that. I wanted to. That is true. I wanted to surprise him. I mean, he had he had caught wind of something because he was kind of poking around. He was asking Austin all stuff, what's going on, all this stuff, and so he knew something was up, but he didn't know really what was going to go down. And uh, I was just I was just so thankful that Blake would allow me to do that. I mean, he wanted to do a duet song. They didn't know what song that we wanted to do together. They had pitched a couple of songs to me. I had uh, emailed Blake and said, hey, buddy, what do you think about doing Treat It Right, my dad's song on the show as a duet? And without fail, I mean, he emailed right back. His reply was, let's do it. And I was just so excited to have the opportunity to bring my dad joy on a national stage like that because, I mean, he's been doing music his whole life, and that's all he's done is bring happiness to people and joy through music. And I know for me personally, he's been such a wonderful father and He's given me so many talents and told me so many things. It's it's like having a mentor every day that you can ask questions to and live with. And I know that I've been so blessed to have that opportunity. And I just was so thrilled to be able to bring him a little excitement. I mean, I, I still think that's one of the greatest songs ever. It's just a simple yeah. tune, but it's got so much rock and roll in it and so much attitude and, you know, the, the hey haze in the chorus and the scream that he did in the song. It, to me, it was... It's one of the most iconic songs from the from the sixties, I think. You know, of course, I have a biased opinion, obviously, but uh, and uh, you know, and, and he, I have him to thank for a, a lot of the talents that I have. Um, he was much older than all the other parents whenever I was growing up, and he had been through a lot more, and so he was always the cool dad, you know. And uh, he would he would treat me and my friends with a lot of respect, like we were just his his buddies, and. He introduced us to a lot of music that we probably would have never even heard uh, that were, you know, maybe outdated to our generation or something of that nature. But really, we were fortunate to have him in our lives to show us the records that he had and to spend the time to talk about what he liked about certain artists and why he thought their music was popular. And uh, I certainly remember all of those conversations and try to use them every day when I have the opportunity. <laughs> 